The critics, and you knew there would be some, going through the transcript from last year, you said you wouldn't please everybody. The critics could criticized the Rice Commission and the NCAA after both sets of announcements for not going far enough, and it seemed it was always rooted in amateurism or the amateurism model. You expected that? Yeah, sure. Look, if, if you were one of those people who said the root problem here is that college basketball players aren't paid, right, or they're not, they're not being provided with, with money uh, and, and they need to be uh, compensated in some fashion, you were pretty much guaranteed to be unhappy because it was really clear that nobody in the college leadership positions is interested in going that direction and the Rice Commission wasn't interested in going in that direction. So if your sole belief is student basketball players, men's basketball players need to be paid and until they're paid, this doesn't work, well then... And that never came up with no, the Rice Commission. No, it was never even addressed. No, no. Well, it was addressed, but they said they never... Uh, of course, they right. said, no, no, that's not what collegiate basketball is about. So basically there's no more traction when it comes to issues of name and likeness in your mind. The Rice uh, Commission did say it should be revisited in 20 or 21 after some of the certain cases are worked through the court. Yeah, I'm obviously not going to comment on ongoing uh, litigation that's out there, but their position was that there, there may or may not be something around that question, but we can't even discuss it today because, because of the nature of the litigiousness of what's going on. The news out of the G League paying one player for one year, I believe a contract of up to $125,000 a year. You also said here last year, hey, if student, if, if, if the college, if basketball players don't want to come play basketball college, don't. Go play in the G League. Do you think this will allow more players to go to the G League? Well, sure, it'll, it'll allow it and it, well, may, it may motivate them. Right. I, I think it's, first of all, a good development in that, again, young people should have options and choice. They do in golf or baseball or you know, why not, why not basketball? So I think that's healthy. I, I hope that young people and their families will look at all of the options in front of them and, and everybody's anticipating that eventually the NBA will lower their, their draft age um, for the regular NBA sometime in the Which near Adam future. Which Adam Silver said he wants to. Yeah. But he has yeah, to everybody's get the PA. Kind of, yeah, everybody's kind of saying they want to get there. Now they got to figure out how to do it. That's their rule. But uh, having those things in place and then and then making sure that young people understand and their families that you know you can go to college you can get a degree you can go play professional ball that's all available to you through us but if that's not the model you want and you want to go play and you can make $125,000 doing it fine I mean that's a perfectly sensible option for someone to have uh, and they ought to be able to have that choice I suspect you're going to see a number of people uh, looking, we'll find out this year, right? We get a first pass at it. There'll be some really talented young men who I'm sure say, no, I think uh, going to college is a better deal than, than taking $125,000. $125, $125, I think that'll be an interesting market test, right? Of how do people view the value of being a collegiate athlete? And I suspect there'll be a lot that say, no, no, I'd rather go to college. Before